Look, check this out. I said it before and I'm going to say it again. If you want something out of life, man, you got to put that dog on grind in. And you don't listen. I listen. You do not get nowhere. You do not get nowhere busting your behind on somebody else's job. The most we would do is make you a supervisor. You would not get nowhere busting your behind working two hourly wage jobs. It's not going to happen. I've done it. I've done it. That's why I'm telling you, I've done it. You got two options. Either get you a trade or screw that. Go with a trade that is in high demand. Right now, a pipe welder can can easily, easily make 150000 a year. Easy. A structural welder, he can make about 120, 110. Now, if you want to get technical, a pipe welder that's willing to go out there and get it out the mud can make 200 grand. A structural welder willing to get it out the mud can go make about 140, 150. But you got to be, you got to be running after it. That's your first option is to get you a high demand trade. Your second option is to start a business and put the five to ten years of grind in before you turn a profit. That's just that's that's the brutal reality of it that nobody tells you. The job I'm going to right now, there's no reward. There is no reward for my hard work. Yeah, they're not gonna fire me. They'll let me work seven days a week if I want. But what I'm gonna get out of all that? You're gonna get a broke back. And the reason I say you'll get a broke back. I almost doggone broke my back yesterday helping the guy out. It's a, it, 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 they have what you call blower fans on these boats. So people can, like when you're out at sea, they got blower fans for vents and stuff like that. Well, these two guys were struggling because what they was do, they had to come down the stairs with it. Had to get it off the boat. It was in the living quarters. So it, it's not a fan two, three people can pick up. This thing is heavy. So what they did, they got to hook up a winch unbolt it, lower it down, and they got to winch it out of there. They got to winch it over here, winch it, winch it. But when you get down the stairs, you got to pick it up over the rail and winch it down the stairs. Well, they should have had two come-alongs. They had one come-along. It only lowered down the stairs so far. And this guy's strained the thought, man, if y'all can push up on it and hold it, I unhook the winch, lower the winch, rehook it up, and hook it back up to the blower fan. Now, I didn't know this thing was that heavy. At first, I was on top, pulling it. The guy was underneath, pushing up. I said, hold on, man, hold on. Let me get underneath. Both of us can push up on it. Look here. We got down there. We pushed up on it. It took this dude literally five minutes to unhook the winch, hook it back up. And I don't blame him. He's just doing his job. And I'm telling him, I said, come on, man, let's go. So he, uh, he's traveling, trying to get it done. And listen. Boy, that's a nice dump trailer he got down. Boy, I love it. I just love looking at trucks with dump trailers and ski steers and heavy equipment. Because those guys making money. Well, anyway, we pushing up on this thing, pushing up, and I'm losing leverage. I'm running out of breath because this thing heavy. I'm like, come on, man, I can't hold it. So he trying, he trying, he trying to get it, he trying to get it. And my, I went from standing up, pushing it, to being like this. Another 120 seconds, that thing would have broke my back. And guess what I would have been left with? Drug test him. All right? He passed the drug test. Who fault it was? Man, it's his fault. That way he wasn't even in his work area. All right, well, it's his fault. We ain't going to pay out nothing. See that? That's what I get for busting my behind for a piece of trash company. Now, imagine, now, imagine, now, that played in my head the rest of the night while I was at work. I said, man, bro, this was my fault because I shouldn't have been over here. Now imagine, okay, they would have had to get a little bed to get me off the boat. Safety would have ran down there, wouldn't know what to do. He ain't no doggone doctor. Call 911, get an ambulance out here to get me to the hospital. Then they get me to the hospital. Oh, Mr. Gibson, you broke your back. And I don't know if you can break your back and recover from it. But I started thinking like, bro, I could have been paralyzed. But it, it would have fell on top of me. And it would have hurt the other guy that was pushing up on it too. So I would have broke my damn back. 
Now I got to go home and tell my wife and kids. Man, my back broke. I can't work. And you know what would start happen? A domino effect. Now it go now it goes back to what kind of financial planner you are. Are your bills paid up? You got a broke back. You're not shaking back in 90 days. Is your bills paid up? Is my bills paid up six months? Heck no. Nah. I got 50, 60 grand put up while I can chill? Heck no. Nah. So a domino effect will start, okay? Light bill come in, that ain't paid. Your lights get shut off. Your water gets shut off. Phone bill will get shut off. Any vehicle that's not paid for, we're coming to get it. That new F-250 I just bought, it's not paid for. They would've came and got it. That dump trailer that, that I, that I uh, bought, it's paid up until July. They would've came and got it. My, my mortgage, they'd've put me out. Who can I call? Who can I call and say, now look, I know how much my bills is. Uh, listen, for me to run my entire household, that, that, that goes from gas to food to uh, trailer payments, truck payments, insurance on my vehicles, insurance on my business, uh, all the bills, money to get, my, money to get uh, small things. For everything in my house, I need $4,500 a month. There is nobody in my contact list I can call and say, bro, you got $4,500. They give it to me for the first month. They want it back. You think they're going to give it to me for the next month? No, they're not. It's not their responsibility. So then it goes back to nobody's coming to save you. So you have to, you, it is a dog fight for a man to survive. Family or no family, it's a dog fight. The average person isn't making that kind of money to just have a hundred grand sitting there, sitting in their account. I'm working on that though. I'm making a little more than average. See, I, I, I'm seeing things in the future. You see what I'm saying? So you got to have an understanding woman that see it with you. Not all about trips and vacations and brand new cars because when stuff hit the fan, who you calling to save you? Now, I'm not saying it's not people that can rally around you to help you. Who's kicking out 4,500 a month? First thing somebody gonna say, well, man, you need to let this other truck go. You don't need two trucks. You see what I'm saying? Stuff, well, man, you don't need two more, sell one, but they paid for it. Man, you need to sell them. For a man, it's a dog fight. Nobody's coming to save you. You better wake up. That's why I don't get into buying clothes and vacations and new cars, because see, I know when stuff hit the fan, nobody's coming to save you. And if you think somebody's coming to save you, boy, you're gonna be in for a rude awakening. I pray none of that happened for you. So that's why I say you work these jobs, you suck them dry, and you go. You don't give yourself to, you don't give your life to no job because when stuff hit the fan, they're not gonna be there for you. I know a lady right now, uh, I know a lady right now is going through some things with her child. Guess what her job did? Well, we're gonna have to let you go if you don't come back to work. But man, I got a real emergency. Well, we just gonna take y'all payroll for now. Well, I'm gonna lose my insurance. But you're not working. You see that? Nobody care about you, man. So guess what? You shouldn't care about them. You should be looking towards your future.